Right now, we're in New York City at the Hudson Yards, in the vessel. Well, not in the vessel, but at the vessel. Let's do this. All for Christmas is you. You, baby. Laura. Laura and Zoe. Zoe. He's my son. That's your son? All right. Explain social media in one word. I'd say it's addictive. Terrible. And if you had to give him advice before signing up for social media, what would you tell him? Um, cautious who you talk to. Be aware of people that bully others online. Um, and don't put too much of your personal stuff back out that people can slam out back to you or spread rumors about you. You know, because a lot of I know a lot of young kids. They they give other kids. You know, terrible things, death threats, and yeah. it's been awful. I've heard, I've heard a lot about kids, yeah. playing, you know, transgender or whatever. They, you know, they make fun of them at school and then on, on the internet. And Do you think that parents know how to deal with all this that's going on on the internet? I don't. I know how to deal with it because I was a good mom. Yeah. Okay. Because he's been using computers since he was a year old. Hello? Two? Love goes shopping? Yeah. Yeah, a long time he's been using computers and he's in tech. So I taught him, you know, I bought him everything to do with computers. And I don't think he's had a problem with people online because I think it's parents. It's, it's just being a good parent. Okay? You need to keep an open relationship with your children, especially if they're young and impressionable, in whatever reason, you know, be cautious who they talk to online, be cautious, people say who they are and they say, put up fake photos and they're not, and then you end up getting in trouble or hurt, so just, just keep your wits about you and if it doesn't feel right, yeah. it probably isn't. Do you, to your gut. do you think that parents, a majority of the parents have that open relationship with their no. sons and daughters that they could talk? I don't. And I was a very young mother. I had him at 21. Yeah. And uh, from day one, even before I had him, I had, you know, headphones on my stomach playing the music, talking to him, and, and then I taught him from, from like, no idea how this relates to it. I don't know, but I, <laughs> it's just it's just no, the relation. You need to teach your children before the age of five years old about everything. Stranger danger. A stranger is a person that you don't know, but it not might not be somebody who's a bad person. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes a stranger can help you if you're lost outside. You know. So uh, other things like parents need to make sure their kids know their first and last name, their home address, their phone number, the amount yeah. of little kids I've met yeah. lost in a mall or something. Yeah. I said to them, what's your, your mum's name? Mummy. Yeah, that's it. What's your phone number? I don't know. Where do you live? Um, it's a house that's got a red roof. Yeah. So they're not, they're not informative. You, the first five years of your child's life is the most important and that will mold them mostly for the rest of their life. Don't force them to do things that they don't want to do. Yeah. And I was talking to him like this a little bit ago. He was like, I don't know, I, I don't want to do my homework. Yeah. I don't want to go to an audition. I yeah. don't want to do this. I was like, okay, don't do it. Yeah. You know? And what do you do in the tech industry? I'm a software engineer. Software engineer? Can you develop apps? Uh, I know how. But I have a non-compete with my employer, so I don't really do it much on the side. Yeah. Um. I guess off this interview, I have to ask you. You know, if maybe you can help me develop something. But yeah, he knows how to do a lot of I stuff. Know, I know a lot of people. So if you could give yourself advice before signing up for social media, I want to get on social media and have my own page, and I've been wanting to do like YouTube and talk to other children and parents and help them. 
Yeah. There's a lot of kids. The parents are not there. They go out drinking. They yeah. smoke in the house with the kids there. And then they wonder why their kids are smoking and drinking and getting drunk. Yeah. Because you're, you're influencing. So what's holding you back from starting that page? Say that again. What's holding you back from starting that page? In what way? Like, what's holding you back from starting it? Oh, I just don't know how to do it. He never showed me. Yeah. And going back, what advice would you give yourself, your younger self, before signing up? Pick up your mask for No, I'm going to keep it on because... I mean, you could take it off. I... No, I'll keep it he on. He thinks he's going to... He's got uh, two masks on. Oh, no, this is because this is like my... The business mask was so like... It's not really like you protective see, I, the thing false. Is I don't know how to edit. And all that. So I can't do it. Yeah. I don't know how to edit. So I don't know how to upload stuff properly. The the advice that I would give myself would just be to just probably to not do it. Like I don't really do social media anymore. I kind of cut it. Other than like some time on Reddit. Yeah. I don't really use it anymore. Um, I just think it's become a divisive tool that uh, is used to manipulate people at this point. Like. You go on Facebook and it's just, you know, 50% of people parroting about one side of politics, 50% of, of people parroting about the other side, and no one's fucking telling the whole side of the story. Yeah. He gets mad. And a lot of things are getting deleted, you know, a lot of censorship. I'll put it this way, like, I wouldn't trust Zuckerberg as far as I could throw him, and I'm not a big dude, so I couldn't throw him very far. Yeah. Uh, it, my advice would just be to just don't get on it. They have too much information about you already. When you combine that with what Google knows about you from your search histories, they know everything. Like, yeah. They know what you want to buy before you know what you want to buy. And that's why the ads are so good. And as... They get on my nerves. In your, in your, in your job place, do you guys like create ads or like find like psychological ways to keep people on? Not what I do. I work in finance. Yeah. And do you know like the, the tactics that they have to keep people coming back? Yeah. I mean, it's, they make it addictive. <laughs> like, you know how Facebook, you can, it's like a, you can just keep scrolling forever. There's no bottom of a page anymore. That's to keep you going, to keep you addicted, to keep you a constant, infinite flow of information. Um, they, yeah, they gamify it, so they add things where maybe like certain websites you get like upvotes or points and things like that, and likes, and people just want to get more likes than they did on their yeah. last post, and shit like that that makes it addictive. I have... There's something I'll say real quick, TikTok. If I turn on TikTok, I'll see the same, maybe up to five people on there all day long, so they've got loads and loads of followers so they can yeah. go live and I've only got like, I don't know, less than a hundred. I have a quote. just make videos about garbage. Yeah, TikTok. Created by China. Yes. In any crazy conspiracy way, do you think that China secretly made the app to like try to divide us? I don't think Persuade the election? To try to divide it, to divide anyone or anything like that, but a hundred percent they mine a ton of data off of that app and that data is is going back to the Chinese government at the end of the day. Like that's a, it's 99.99% that that's where it's ending up. Whether or not you trust that government with that data is up to you. I Do you think that it helped persuade the, the, the election at all? TikTok, probably not. No? Not TikTok. Facebook, yes. Yeah. Facebook and Twitter 100% has had influence on the last two elections. Um, but people, I find that TikTok, people huh? un unfriend you if you say like, I don't support Donald Trump, I don't really like him, my son talks very into politics, he knows everything, you could have a conversation yeah. with him, and he gets mad, I've seen him get back and forth to people that I know, because, what is your reason? I have a myriad of reasons. He has a myriad. It depends on the person. But some, pe some people I know won't speak to me anymore because I said I'm not pro-Trump. But is it, that, is it that sad that we created that in a, in a world where your own friends and even people getting divorced because of this? Political issues? Oh yeah, my, my son's dad, he, he's one of his ex-girlfriends or whatever, she 
won't, he won't talk to her ever again because she goes for Trump. That's what I said. I would say that mankind's best invention t to date, certainly, and maybe forever, is the internet. Mankind's worst invention is the social media. I think, I personally think that it's the downfall of us, social media. I mean, you're gonna have a lot of people fall out of going for like STEM careers and if kids are making millions of dollars dancing, people are gonna be like, I'm dropping out of school. This is not what I wanna do. When this kid's 19 pulling up in a Lamborghini, why well, pay $100,000 to, you know, stress out in school? Well, but he's worked his way up. Yeah, that's good. And I, I'm afraid that like, in the future, you know, less and less people are going to be intrigued to go get the doctor degree and 10 years in school and work and all this. Personally, they I should put a people, blow, uh, hold on it. A I blow. think the influencer lifestyle that you're referring to is, I don't think it's going to go away, but I think it is going to lose popularity over the next decade. Um, How so? You have, you have your Logan Pauls, your Jake Pauls, your... You know, like, you're, like all the people that are big and popular and young and famous and make millions, but they're the exception, not the rule. For every one of them, there's a hundred thousand people that have tried and failed. Yeah. And it's. But isn't that with anything, athletes and. Absolutely. Everything. Absolutely. A lot of it is luck. Um, but at the end of the day, social media itself is going to get regulated over time. It's going to have. It's already losing popularity amongst a large segment of people. I don't know if it's actually got a lower user base now than it did. I don't think Facebook has lost users, but a lot of people have unplugged from it. I think it's the weirdness, but it's it's not it's not too it's too addictive, like you said before, and everyone admits it's addictive. Friend each other for stupid crap. Yeah. You know, oh, I don't like Jesus. Okay, you know, I don't want to talk to you. I don't care. I'm personally, I'm very open-minded. I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm friends from everywhere. You really don't know me that well. No, I, I don't care what religion a person is. You know, they see somebody who's Asian or even Mexican and think they're like a suicide bomber because they're the same color. Yeah. There's too much for a bit. Well, it's stereotyping, but okay. Do. Uh, so what do you what do you think about like? The whole aspect of them being able to have these scientists back them and make it more and more addictive. Every time, you know, they find something new, they keep adding it. It's the same thing casinos do, right? Casinos find every single way that they can to keep you in the casino. There's no windows in a casino, so you don't know what time of day it is. There's no clocks for the same reason. The carpets are ugly, so you don't walk around looking at the floor and you're looking up at all the slot machines and the tables and the people having fun. They give you free drinks so that you'll keep gambling so that you can spend, stay until you lose all the yeah. money. They'll give you free nights in the hotel. So how do you compare that to like social media and what they do? In the end of the day, the people are, these companies are going to do whatever they can to make profits. That's a side effect of corporate America and capitalism, which I'm not anti-capitalist. I fully believe in capitalism, but I do think that left unchecked, capitalism will destroy the country. Like there needs to be checks and balances, not just on government, but on businesses too. Yeah. It is not like we don't let businesses dump shit in our water supply because that's harmful to people. Just because Facebook isn't dumping shit in our water supply doesn't mean they aren't doing things that are harmful to people. And over time, those regulations are going to come into place that will prevent certain harmful. Things. I think the I think the mental aspect they already did enough damage with all this mental health. A lot of people that I interview talk about how they're insecure now and they you know they're lonely. We live in a lonelier society because people don't go outside no more. I try to go out, but there's nowhere to go, and I don't really know anybody. Yeah. You know, it's my only family. Yeah. People say like it brings people closer together, but I think maybe online. But I've also seen another thing um, online. There's a woman who she goes to people's houses to try and fix children that are. Yeah. And there was one little boy, about eight years old. Yeah. And he was on the, on his playing a game 14 hours a day. Yeah. He's addicted to video games. Yeah. And that's another thing. I heard years ago some 
some Asian guy died playing video games. Do you remember that? I do actually remember that. Yeah, he yeah. played without eating, drinking, and he was just, and he died. One of my segments is uh, I ask people about their screen time on their phone, and the highest I've seen so far is nine hours. I mean, nine hours a day you're on your phone, like, what are you up for? You're not, you're, what are you up for, 18 hours a day? I used to be on Facebook a lot more, but now I've stopped because the only time I really go on to Facebook is I just want to see my memories from the past so I can save them. Yeah. Because there's really no one worth talking to, really. Yeah, and I, I have a question. Do you think this technology was inevitable? Yes. And do you think that it was the best for humanity or we just took it into open arms and adapted to it? I think that humanity, like, it was inevitable that we were going to develop this. I don't think it was necessarily for the best. Um, obviously, we adapted it, but I think it's inevitable that we would make this mistake. Yeah. And hopefully, we will learn from, like tech regulation is still in its infancy tech in itself is still in its yeah. infancy um, and until we've got to be honest until we have more young people in congress and in positions of power that understand the technology we're not going to see that dramatic change because a lot of the people that are regulating technology companies don't understand the technology that they're regulating. So with the age gap, and do you think that the older generations understand what we are going through? Well, okay, I'm one of the older generations, and I don't mind saying my age. I mean, I'm not gonna ask, you I'm know. 57. You look a lot younger than that, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you should ask him how old he is. How old are you? 34. 34? Yo, 34? How old do you guys think I am? Exactly what I was 19. 19? 19. 19. Yeah. God. So, about the age gap. He's, yeah, 34. He doesn't look it. <laughs> but I, I, got some, I got some grays in here. They're coming. Yeah, they're, they're. That doesn't mean anything. Some people go gray uh, really young. It doesn't mean they're going to get hair. Gonna yeah. Get so, talking about the age gap, what were you saying about that? Well, I just think that. I, I always thought the younger people should be in Congress, like we, like Buttigieg, is that his name? Buttigieg. Buttigieg, and there was a couple of other... You got AOC, you got... You think there should be more, you think there should be more of a balance like between the old heads and the young heads? I don't think we should have old people in politics. I, I disagree. I think that... That old. I think that there needs to be a healthy mix of people. Mm -hmm. I just think right now... Now, you look at the people who are in the highest levels of office, yeah. and you've got people like, like Donald Trump is in his 70s, you know, his mid late 70s. You've got uh, Nancy Pelosi is in her 80s, I believe. Um, I mean, Biden's about to go into office, and yeah, he's in his late 70s. Got, like, the only one I think that's older that is pretty cool is Bernie Sanders. He understands younger people, he's I mean, married to a young woman. There's Elizabeth Warren, there's plenty of others that are older but a little more in touch. I think Biden is too old. But do you think a younger person would be able to like... Tell you what? Understand like even like out of the country, you know, foreign relations and... And that's why I think that there needs to be a healthy mix. You need yeah. some people that have got the experience that understand the the foreign domestic and domestic policies. You need people that have seen mistakes made generations yeah. before to not repeat them. Yeah. And you need the younger people as well that understand the newer technologies and the newer generations to know the issues that they face. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, and I've experienced this myself, being in my 30s, like, yeah. you just, at some point, you just lose touch with what the new generation is into. Yeah. Like, I am not ashamed to admit, I did not know about TikTok until maybe like six months ago. Like, it's crazy. I just, it wasn't really on my radar, yeah. and I'm not a big social media person. There's so another one called Win. There's a lot of them out there. There's Thriller, and they're all kind of compete, they're all trying to compete with each other, you know, like, Instagram just added reels. And then they're all trying to bite off each other, and it's kind of sad. And then the it's just women, young girls get on there and just, you know, 
make their faces look beautiful with, you know, airbrushing, Photoshop. That's another thing I don't agree with. Filters and makeup and yeah. I mean, all... a little bit of filter. I would use a little bit of filter to cover up my wrinkles. But the thing is, I feel like we should be in a we should be in a society where we should love ourselves as we are off camera, off filters. You're right. And we instead of building up strong mental health and strong people, we we built a kind of like a weaker mindset like on mentally unhealthy society and how we're we supposed to prosper as a country in that well, part of that is the older generation in Congress didn't grow up with the concept of mental health. Yeah. You had physical health and that was it. It was, if you had a broken bone, okay, we'll put you in a cast, we'll let it heal. But there wasn't a concept of like, like, like dyslexia. At one point, they didn't think was a real thing. They yeah. People who were dyslexic were just stupid. Yeah. You know, like, but we've made a lot of advancements. We understand a lot better. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of papers and psychological studies that have been conducted. We understand a lot of these things a lot better these days, but these are things that have been developed recently in the last couple of decades. Yeah. Uh, and un until we get people into positions of power that understand mental health themselves, you're not going to see the mental health reform this country needs to help people. You think that they should maybe put that into like our school system, maybe focus on mental health as much as they a lot of kids, everyone I know has been depressed at one point in their yeah. lives, you know, and I think they need to talk about it a lot more. They do it in England, they talk about mental health. You guys are from, you're from England? He was born there and he's, he's got an English accent but he doesn't do it all the time. I have both. Yeah. This is not an unnatural accent for me. Yeah, he this talks like that, but when he goes to talk to his friends, he sounds really... Yeah, um, I think that this country needs to do two things. I need they, I think that they need to educate mental health more in schools. Yep, um, and parents need to watch their children from a young age. If your child Eventually is, I'll get to say it a second. I'm sorry. It, it's a, you know, it's no, okay. I'm just saying, if you, if, you, if you ignore your kids and you don't, you see them depressed, and you don't, and you ignore that, and a lot of parents do. But you. They say, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine. They don't tell you if they got beat up at school half the time. They don't tell you that um, people call you names and you're bullied. They don't. Kids, a lot of kids don't. But you have, oh, if you have open communication, and you say to your child, I do not care what it is, whether it's to do with anything that is maybe taboo or someone says to you oh don't you say that to your mom or I, you know i'm gonna hurt your family stupid shit yeah so i really think from a young age mental health should be monitored because so many young kids have committed suicide or attempted yeah and i just think you need to really be a good parent but isn't it also sad that now that follows kids homes they can't just say I left school, the bullying's back there, I'm safe at home. When I was a kid. When You're not I was safe. In high school, like, we went home, that was it. No one was fucking talking to you anymore. Unless you called them up on the phone. Yeah. There was no social media feed, no people messaging you on Twitter. That wasn't a thing yet. Yeah. Like, you had like AOL Instant Messenger back then. That wasn't even cool yet. That wasn't even popular. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. going back, what I'm saying is I think that there's two things this country needs to do. It's better education on mental health for the kids in school, um, whether that's middle school, elementary school, high school, whatever. It needs to be something that's what taught and spoken about. Start? I don't know. That's that's a different subject. I haven't really put much thought into. I think once, I think they need to find out when kids starting to get on their phones, and it's sadly at a really young it's not age just now. Phones. It's just like neglect. I think the Not other thing that we need to do, I think we, this country needs universal health care. Yeah. And to anyone that disagrees with that, to anyone who thinks, I don't want to pay for someone else's health care, I want you to understand how health insurance works. You pay a monthly premium for a service you do not use unless you get sick. That money that you pay to that health care premium, that's not just sitting around for you for a rainy day. You don't get that back if you don't get sick. They use that for other people. Yeah. You are paying for other people's health care with insurance. If we do it via the government, you just, instead of paying it to a private company, you pay it to the government. Talking about, talking about what you were just talking about, um, do you think that people are less 
helpful and hand in hand. Like back then, like you were in a community, you knew your whole neighborhood, you knew your neighbors. Nowadays, people don't even know their own neighbors. They don't help their neighbors as much as I think they could. I know my neighbors, but. <laughs> but you think, you think people. He's a nice guy. He's like, you know, I'm a nice person. We both will go out of our way to help others. Yeah. But, you know, I've asked people in my building, elderly, do you need any food I can go shopping for? You? But, you know, but they never contact me. You know, but, um, and he's the same way. Do you he would help somebody. Do you think because we can, like, argue and fight and say stuff on the internet and get away with it that we're less empathetic in today's world? When we actually go out and see people? Okay, it's possible. Well, I, I haven't really thought about that. People Carly. like this when they go out. On their phone. They walk they across... the lobsters? Yeah, they're <laughs> lobsters. <laughs> okay, they're texting on their phone, yeah. listening to music, and walking across the street. I, I don't know how many people who are either the driver or the, the, the pedestrian has been hurt because they're not looking where they're going. In fact, I have a scooter, and... How many times are you going to answer a completely different question? Oh, because <laughs> I have anxiety. I, I have... We're, we're going... It's all right. Me too. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's affected people's empathy. I think it's definitely... It, it's easier to be a, an asshole on the internet when you have anonymity. Yeah. You know, when, when someone can't, you know, slap you in the face or, you know hit you or something from what you said, it's easier to do. Now, how long have you been here for? Been here in... United States. United States for 18 years. Did you guys notice a difference between, like, how people treat each other? What, in England? Yeah. yeah well, different cultures. It's, it's, people are more friendly. They'll say, would you like to come in for a cup of tea? I mean, it also depends on where you are in the States, too, though. Like... Yeah. The I, South, I, like, yeah, like, well, south you have the famous southern hospitality. Yeah, people in California are different from people in New York, who are different from people, you know, in Washington. Like, everywhere is different, um, and the UK is different too. And do you think that we should normalize making eye contact and saying hi to strangers, yes. giving out compliments? Yes. Make I've seen I do that anyway. I do it anyway, but I've seen, like, but, yeah. people where I live, I don't live far from here. I've seen somebody fall in the street and nobody comes to help him or her. Well, we take out our phones now and we just record them. Yeah, yeah they record and put it on, on YouTube. Look what happened to this guy. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Isn't that sad? Stupid. Nice no. Less compassion? No compassion. No. I just think, I think the only way you can reverse this is if you start your children from young, young, young and you restrict them um, you're playing video games. If you you can't stop them from playing video games if they want to because they're going to go to a friend's house and play. Yeah. If you if you say it's taboo, oh you're not having that. You're going to be a vegetarian. They go to their friend's house and eat something, or you know, do the other. If you were talking about teaching your kids and restricting them, how do you take away from all the values and all the things they're going to learn on social media compared to what you're going to teach them growing up in the household? Like, how do you stop them from not listening to the media and social media and listen to you saying, this is the right, I know the best, you know? Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about, okay. Um, yeah, they think that whatever's on the internet is the right thing. I mean, it can be helpful. Yeah. I mean, you can diagnose yourself with something, you know, We've both done it and, you know, found out we were right. Um, but it's, don't just listen to that. Listen to doctors, parents, and listen to your, you know, your family. I mean, even if you don't have parents, listen to your grandparents. Even if they're old and old fashioned, listen to them. Treat everything online with a healthy dose of skepticism and do your own research peer-reviewed scholarly articles and scientific data and facts yeah talking about like grandparents and everything and as i've seen is as humans nowadays become more and more you're good more and more disconnected do you think that families in the households are losing connection because of 
you know, the disconnection between humans and like the world around us because we're connected to the phones more. Yeah, just they, they sing the computer as a babysitter or the TV even. Yeah. And they, they, don't, they, they don't let their kids out of the house. When he was little, he would go out. But do you think it's that they don't allow them out of the house or kids don't want to leave the house no, anymore? sometimes they don't let them go out. Yeah. They think that something bad, a couple of friends, and you're not going to go into a car or walk down a dark alley with strangers. Yeah. You're, you know, broad daylight, you're probably fine. Talking about that fear, you think that that fear is what they're seeing on the internet? You know, people getting like murdered and no, it's been like that for years. kidnapped. But do you think that because you can easily get it on your phone that... In general, the world is actually safer now than it's ever been because everyone has a camera in their pocket. Everyone's yeah. being videoed all the time. And that... But not even in the pocket. There's all these stores yeah. and everything. Yeah. I, I think now, generally, the world is safer than it has ever been historically. Yeah. Because of... Okay, if you had a child, would you... And your child was about, you know, eight and up, and he wanted to go out and play, would you She's let him... Yeah, no, no, I like, I like this. No, it's, it's, it's a discussion, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I wish we had our own show, we'd be good. Yeah. Uh, so, would you let, because I used to let him when he was eight years old. One day I didn't feel good and I, I had a really bad migraine and I said, can you go to school on your own? Yeah. And people knew him on the train, always the same people in the carriage. Yeah. And he always got to that carriage. I, I think that would be safer to do now than yeah. it was when I did. Yeah, but you didn't talk. You just, yeah, I taught him about people. Yeah, and if you had a kid, when right? I mean, do. Eight-year-old go out and walk to the store, and you know, go out with his friends to the movies or shopping. Depends where I live. Depends how smart. Right? If I have an eight-year-old that's a dumbass, then probably not. Oh, no. Would you? At what age would you let them go on their phones? Start using social media? Oh, I let him. I, I think probably. Your for phone? me personally, I'd probably say around. 11 or 12. When did you get yours? Um, about 13, 12, 13. Uh, it was, I was in secondary school. Oh, well, he used to pull me from the phone box with cards. Did you ever think it was going to be like this? Um, you can't predict the future, even though people think they can. They're mediums and they can predict whatever's going on. Yeah. It's a bunch of crap. And they make so much money doing that, like John Edward. I mean... People believe everything he says. Oh, there's someone in the crowd with a, a heart okay, condition. I don't think he's asking about psychics. Okay. Oh, no, I mean, but, uh, psychic. some psychics are pretty cool, but like, I they're mean... They're all fake. Well, I, I mean, I think a, a lot of this is, a, a lot of what's going on is illusion, you know what I mean? Like... People just want to make money off of whatever they can do. Even so, yeah, no, we're good. Thank you, guys. Yo, is there a way I can...